Yo, yo, yo. I'm hoping that's enough. I looked at the last stream I did and it was like not at the, um, it wasn't at that like level, the voice. But what up, guys? Dress Venture coming back at it with another one for you. Um, today I'm going to be going over virtue ethics diving deeper into what that is and uh yeah so without a further ado i'm gonna get right into it and uh really kind of um uh get into everything so i'm just getting a couple things ready i wanted to start doing the live streaming but yo i realized how much it even takes to like do a video like this my computer just honestly can't it just it's right like it's the cpu it says look, look at that look at that almost 20 percent and all i'm doing is recording it i'm not even live streaming so i realized like yo i gotta just make sure uh i get the word out there and get it going and as i start to do that then eventually uh i'm gonna get you know a new computer hopefully better wi-fi stuff like that and be able to do all that but all right guys let's stop procrastinating so virtue ethics and philosophy across cultures right so let's see you know let's look up the definition of virtue ethics try to get kind of a universal understanding of what we're all talking about here uh da, 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 da. virtue ethics Wikipedia. I like Wikipedia a lot, guys. I think that there's a lot of good things. It says, virtue ethics is an approach to ethics that treats virtue as central. Virtue ethics is usually contrasted with two other major approaches in ethics, consequentialism and uh, deontology, which makes the goodness of an outcome an action of an action uh, in the concept of moral duty central. When, while virtue ethics does not necessarily deny the importance of ethics of goodness, of states of affair, or of moral duties, it emphasizes virtue and sometimes other concepts like edamonia, the good spirit, to an extent uh, that other ethic theories do not. So key concepts are uh, virtue and vice. In virtue ethics, a virtue is a disposition Let's look into what the definition of disposition means. So you see, the, des the, the, the definition of disposition is a person's inherent qualities of mind and character. How we naturally act, right? How we inherently act, right? Our natural temperament. So let's go deeper. What does inherent mean? A person's inherent quality. existing as something as a permanent essential or characteristic attribute meaning it's intrinsic it's deeply rooted within us deeply rooted i love that concept actually so it's nature it's the characteristics and natures of ourselves that is deeply rooted within us the disposition that we uh, have to think to feel and to act in some domain of life similarly a vice is a disposition to think feel and act poorly Virtues are not everyday habits. They are character traits. They are, they are who you are in the sense that they are central to somebody's personality and who uh, they are and what they are like as a person. A virtue is a trait that promotes or exhibits human excellence in the person who exhibits it. And a vice is one that impedes human excellence in the person who exhibits it. Uh, hmm. So I love this. There are two uh, uh, so Socrates. There are two diseases of the soul. And if you look at right here, you know, we go to, you know, uh, some Greek philosophy to help aid us in understanding, you know, why uh, virtue ethics is so important. Um, Socrates says right here, you know, uh, there are two kinds of disease of the soul, vice and ignorance. So 
Vice meaning uh, the negative, the downward, the debauchery, the degrading habits and character and pre and, and dispositions that we have towards life. And ignorance meaning the misunderstanding or the uh, non uh, non just the not even understanding. And uh, sorry guys. And uh, so yeah, it's uh, through that and it's uh, yeah <laughs> sorry. Through ignorance, you know, we uh, ignore, like we're ignoring evidence, ignoring truth. I'm sorry, I gotta get this. Um, so that is why the remedy, what is the remedy to ignorance? It's wisdom. What is wisdom? How do we obtain wisdom? Uh, maybe through philosophy, the philosophia, the love of wisdom, the words of wise men can help inspire us into uh to getting out of ignorance you know and in exemplifying virtue and understanding and med meditating on it and learning how to take and bring and develop it out of ourself um is how we overcome vice right so there's another plato quote right here i think i've heard i like uh the greatest mistake in the treatment of disease is that there are physicians for the body and physicians of the soul although the two cannot be separated that's not the one I was looking for, but there is another Plato quote that talks about like atheism is like a disease of the soul that come arises before misunderstanding. Um, so let's go deeper into this. Uh, da, 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 da. In Greek, in ancient Greek and modern Greek, uh, adi, adumonistic virtue ethics virtues and vices are complex dis uh, positions that involve both affective and intellectual components this that is they are dispositions that involve both being able to reason well about the what they're uh, about what the right thing to do is and also engaging our emotions and feelings correctly um, so just not to go too deeper into it they have to talk about the good spirit the, the um, Aristotle the Nicomachean ethics, the ethics which he left on to his son on how a good person should live and act, which we'll get into. So I'll go and open that up, actually. Uh, the history of virtue. You know, we have the cardinal virtues, which are at the very foundation of, uh, of you know, Christian kind of theology as well as uh, Freemasonry. Um... And yeah, guys, I just kind of opened this up today. I realized I got to get it going. I was making excuses. My mind, I was like, oh, I'm not feeling the best. Don't matter. I got to get out here, start doing it. You feel me? And show other people that they could do it too. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. There's also the seven cardinal virtues. So there's a lot of different forms of virtue ethics. And I'm going to kind of go and talk about some of the ones that I have been particularly drawn to myself. Um, being the cardinal virtues and virtue ethics, I would say is like a set of virtues that are, are are used for a certain means and ends and obtainment, which is developing ourselves, our spirit, Tao, Tao cultivation, right? And this goes uh, along with like why should we, why should we listen? Why should we do that then? And here I'm gonna go into a couple Bible verses before really going in deeper into. Um, uh, deeper into the other stuff that I had on the list. So I want to go into the King James. We have uh, Philippians 4, 8. And it says this, the following, for the load. Finally, brethren. Finally. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good rapport, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So why, why you know what I mean? We, we, we overlook the Bible a lot, but what does it mean right here? Think on these things. Think on it. The more that we think, the more that we put our mind in a set of the higher vibrations of virtue, of love, you know, of all these higher and vibrational things. It draws us to it. It helps us to cultivate and develop ourselves so we may become uh, a recipient and a reflection of that. So thinking about this and being a virtuous person, 
uh, thinking, it, it, virtue begins with our feelings and our thoughts. And the more we engage within that, the more our actions will follow, is what I believe. And um, kind of how he's saying, like, virtue, wisdom, all of this stuff is so interconnected. So if we go to uh, Proverbs 8 here, uh, I really love this. This is the one that I was looking for the other day. But I was not able to uh, find it right away. Uh, let's see how NIV versus KJV looks and which one I would like to do better. Bro. All right. Uh, I'm going to do NIV. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice at the highest point along the way? Where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gate leading into the city, at the entrance, she cries aloud. To you, O oh people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. Listen, for I have trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. For my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver. Knowledge rather than, uh, knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies. And nothing can, uh, nothing you desire can compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight. I have power. By me, kings reign, and rulers issue decrees that are just. By me, princes govern, and nobles, all who rule on earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold, yet or what I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the paths of righteousness, along the paths of justice, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasures full. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works. Whew, that is a deep one. We'll get into that in maybe another video. I was formed long ages ago. At the very beginning, when the world came to be, when there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills I was given birth, before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust on the, uh, of the earth, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, and he when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary, so the waters would not overstep his command. And when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his world, mankind, whole, in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me find life and receive favor from the Lord. But those who uh, fail to find me harm themselves and all who hate me love death. Wisdom is a beautiful thing. Wisdom is so interconnected with virtue. I would say that wisdom breeds and cultivates and is the one of the underlining factors of virtue. So 
So let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's see if they'll have the Nicomian ethics. It'll make a list on Google. We can pull that up, but let's pull this up. Let's see what's up, man. So there we go. Virtue ethics, philosophy across cultures, we won through the wisdom. Like I think honestly, I'm trying to like I'm 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 shooting my ideas. I just like to show you all these different ideas that I have and how they're all centralized around this similar concept. And to allow you to kind of go and maybe you're into the uh, Nicomachean ethics, maybe you're into Stoicism, maybe you're into the Masonic virtues or uh, Confucian is like, I'm just trying to go and give you a you guys a wide variety of things to look and play with and then to go on your, you know, your own journey of trying to understand and discover it. So, uh, yeah, these are some of the keywords, some of the things that I've been kind of focusing on myself that have allowed me to develop spiritually by really meditating on uh, learning how to exemplify these virtues within my life. Uh, so let's, uh, let me get into the Nicomachean ethics real fast. And then, um, and I'm just, I don't even know if that's the right way to say it, guys. But so it's like a, a dialogue. It's a work from Aristotle um, that he gave to his son. And these are the basic ways that, basic ways that uh, Aristotle told his son that he should try to live. And the words might be a little different based off who's translating, but this is uh, what we should say. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I don't know if those are all, if that's, it's only like 12 of them. So let's see this one right here. So then there's the one that's like the in the middle, and then there's ones that it's like the excess, and then the uh, too much. So we have courage, temperance, uh, liberality, magnificence, great soul, uh, soulness, poor, uh, proper ambition, patience, truthfulness, wittiness, friendliness, modesty, righteous indignation, which I think is a very, very, very interesting virtue for him to put on there. Uh, excess for these could be rashness, litigiousness, uh, prodigality, vulgarity, vanity, ambis uh, ambition, ambition, uh, irrescality. Uh, so it's like, that's an interesting thing. Ambition, wrong ambition is in, in the wrong places can, is like you're, you're driving your power and putting it in the wrong places, which is, um, yeah, but irascibility, boastfulness, buffoonery, flattery, shyness, envy, and then the deficiencies of, of courage would be cowardice or temperance, insensibility. So it's just learning the you might be too much of that energy or you might be too not enough of it. And I'm starting to see that you can connect these type of virtues to um, either astrological like uh, signs or planetary. So within the Christian tradition or within Freemasonry itself, there are four cardinal virtues that are very, very, very much uh, exemplified and at the core, like the foundation of the philosophies. And that is prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. So I'm going to go a little bit into the just the definitions of what each of these are and I guess a quick understanding of how I would perceive them. Or I guess, and it says right here a little bit too. So the cardinal virtues are four virtues of mind and character in both classical philosophy and Christian theology. They are prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. They form a virtue theory of ethics. The term cardinal comes from the Latin cardo, hinge. These four virtues are called cardinal because other, all other virtues fall under them and hinge upon them. These virtues derive initially from Plato in Republic. Book 4 said pages, Aristotle ex, uh, expounded upon them systematically in the Nicomachean Ethics. They were also re, uh, recognized by the Stoics and Cicero expanded on them. In the Christian tradition, they are listed in the Apocrypha, and wisdom of Solomon 8 7 and Maccabees 1 18 and 19. I'm really interested to see what it says in there. Um, wisdom of Solomon 8 7. Oops. And, and see kind of what it was saying about those virtues.
If anyone loves to do what is right, laboring with wisdom will produce every virtue. She trains to learn moderation and practical wisdom. She teaches what is right and how to exercise courage. And if a man loves righteousness, her labors are virtues. If you love wisdom and righteousness, that virtue is it. So prudence, also known as wisdom or sophia, right? The ability to discern the appropriate course of action to be taken in a given situation at the appropriate time with consideration of potential consequences. Prudentia is an allegorical female personification of the virtue whose attributes are of a mirror and a snake who is frequently depicted with a pair uh, as a pair with Justia, the lady of justice. Um, prudence is the ability to govern yeah, the uh, in, is the ability to govern and discipline oneself by the use of reason. So being able to use your mind to be able to understand and come to conclusions. It is classically considered to be a virtue and in particular one of the four cardinal, which we talked about. Uh, in the Nicomachean ethics, Aristotle, uh, Nicomachean ethics, Aristotle gives a lengthy account on the virtue of uh, phron phron phronesis, traditionally translated as prudence. Although this has become increasingly problematic as the word has fallen out of the common use. Um, da -da 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 -da. As the mother of all virtues, essentially they say prudence, 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 to be able, the ability to decipher the good from the bad apples, right? And how, what, what is a great way of developing prudence? Biblically speaking, it is that, uh, it's that good fruit produce, a uh, good, <laughs> a good tree produces fruit. And this is uh, set in Matthew. So we see it Matthew 7 right here. So we're going to open that. And this is how we can tell. This is prudence. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A, true, a, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, their fruits ye shall know them. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Boom. God said, that's, that's the word. That's the wordy birdie. That's the, that's that right there is those seeds to develop prudence. So if you want to develop prudence, meditate on this verse right here. Meditate on it. Wherefore by their fruits, ye shall know them. Lord, please help us to develop the spirit of temperance or of uh, prudence. Allow us to, uh, uh, to increase in our reason and our ability to uh, discern uh, and to allow us to then make sure that you direct our mind in the way that is for our best interests. Allow us to just open up and, and understand reason, your reason, your will. Please bless us with that understanding, God, because we, we, you know, without you, we can't receive it. So we ask you, as you say, asking we shall receive. We ask for that wisdom. We ask for that discernment. We ask for that prudence, God, to know your will and to be able to hear your will. And we have the heart and intention to want to hear it. So may it be. Amen. 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 Salah. All right. Justice. Also considered as fairness. Like Libra kind of. The Greek word also meaning uh, having the meaning righteousness. Justice is one of the four cardinal virtues in classic European philosophy and Roman Catholicism. It is the moderation or mean between selfishness and selflessness between having more and having less than one's fair share. Justice is closely related in uh, Christianity to the practice of charity because it regulates relationships with others. It is a cardinal virtue, which is to say it is pivotable because it regulates all such relationships. It is because it is sometimes uh, deemed the most important of the cardinal virtues. <laughs> I guess we're hearing a theme there. <laughs> Um, so what's interesting about the Aristotle is I believe he has 12, his uh, ethics is, is original Nicomachean uh, ethics are 12, like 12 zodiac signs, which is uh, interests me a lot. But it says, according to Aristotle, justice consists in a certain equality by which the just and definite claim of another, neither more or less is satisfied. So just the feeling of the fairness, of the peace, of the 
of the divine law in the in the in the scales being weighed and balanced. Balance, I think, is at the core of justice, and uh, it's like karma. You know, what goes around is what comes around. And uh, trying to think about a Bible verse at the top of my head that is really hitting home with justice. Uh, but you know, it's like the wicked shall have their day. You know, revelations. You know, like uh, the, you know, the angels were. Um, they said, "Well, who who what angel was it that put the, the for that put the mark the Tao on all the foreheads and the and essentially it was uh I think it was Archangel Gabriel Gabriel if I'm if I'm not mistaken but don't quote me or Raphael and and bef and at end times we got the cross we got the mark you know we got the mark of the Holy Spirit on us we got the mark of Christ on us and um if we uh." If we follow this path, you know, if we follow this virtuous path, the hierarchs, the angels, God, Elohim will protect us, I believe. And I think that learning how to understand virtue is learning how to understand Elohim, the Elohim. And I think that draws us closer into a, a very, very intimate relationship with, with God. Uh, so going on next, courage. Courage is one that I really love. You know, I really want to embody more courage in my life doing this is tr me trying to be more courageous with just speaking and expressing myself which i'm going to get into why like i want to do that more um but it says uh and here uh fortitude also known as courage right forbearance strength endurance and the ability to confront fear uncertainty and intimidation uh also related to manliness right the masculine nature the lion says courage is the choice and is the is the choice and willingness to confront agony pain danger uncertainty and intimidation valor is courage or bravely a bravery especially in battle physical courage is bravery in the face of physical pain hardship or even death or threat of death while moral courage is the act is the ability to act rightly in the face of popular opposition shame scandal discouragement or personal loss the classical virtue of of fortitude, also known as courage, but includes the aspect of perseverance and patience. In the Western tradition, notable thoughts on courage have come from the philosophers uh, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Aquinas, and Kierkegaard, as well as Christian beliefs and texts. In the Hindu tradition, mythology uh, has given many aspects of bravery, valor, and courage, with examples of both physical and moral courage exemplified in the Eastern tradition. In, um, the Chinese text, the Tao Te Ching, offers a great deal of thought on courage, both physical and moral. I go in that, yeah, Tao Te Ching is all about cultivating Tao, the virtue within ourselves, the inner virtue and the inner power, which I'm going to get into in one moment. Um, and then, so the last cardinal virtue right here, we have temperance. Uh, and, and you can see it. it in the tarot cards, you know, they all, you know, they're, they're in the tarot cards. You can look at the four cardinal virtues and see them in there. Temperance in its modern use. Let's go with this one first. Temperance, also known as restraint, the practice of self-control, uh, abstention, discretion, and moderation, tempering the appetite. Plato considered this virtue, which may be translated as sound-mindedness, to be the most important virtue was often used in reference to drinking and knowing the right amount to avoid belligerence. And so here it says, is modified a sick guest self-restraint. It is typically described uh, in terms of what individual voluntary front ref refrains from doing. And how, you know, and uh, this includes restraint from revenge by practicing nonviolence and forgiving, restraint from arrogance by practicing humility and modesty, Restraint from excesses such as extravagant luxury and splurging or splurging, and restraint from rage or craving by practicing calmness and self-control. So these are the four cardinal virtues to abstain and help be temperate within our um, passions that we have, right? So we have the Nicomachean Ethics, like I said one time, his best work on ethics, science of the good for human life and which is the end goal or end goal, like the goal or end at which we should obtain um very interesting stuff 
And so this is like some thoughts that I had right here about stuff. It's like virtue is inner power, right? It's the inner wealth that we build and cultivate within ourselves. Um, it's like, uh, da, 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 da. and these virtues come from the Platonic theory of forms, right? <clears throat> the fact that it, there's this like sphere of ideas and forms which are perfect and we are able then to try to tap into that and express those virtues in the way that we can in our perspective. Um, so some virtues that I personally value are loyalty, appreciation, gratitude, generosity, honesty, patience, personal responsibility, mental fortitude, faith, resilience, virtue and liberty. Liberty without virtue is no blessing to us, as Benjamin Rush told us. Virtue generates love, I believe. And these are some of my core values and principles which I believe in life. Is that we should create and we should be a creator and learn how to use our creative energy properly and constructively. That we should cooperate with one another and not fall into this competitive mindset. Negative, com competitive. There is healthy competition. We should be a victor of our circumstance and not a victim. To not fall into vice or victimhood is a good thing. We should be a leader, not a follower. Remember to demonstrate leadership and lead others into the right direction. Remember that health is wealth and we should make sure to take care of our health on a mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical level. The intention of what we do is more important than the production and the outcome points and where our hearts are in that at the end of the day, life, I believe, is we should be focusing on how to improve people over profits. Profit obviously is important. If end of the day, if people are profiting, then that is the best thing. So some things that I've been thinking about, some things that are on my heart and mind a lot, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to kind of hear that out for me. The reason I think that virtue is also really important is because this right here. How often have I thought this and maybe other people, oh, my presence is an illusion. I'm going to act like I'm not here in this space. And I'm just going to drift by. It doesn't work. We are energetic. We are magnetic. We are like electric. Our thoughts, our being, our feeling has an impact in our space and we can't act like it doesn't and when we take control of that when we understand the personal responsibility we must have for ourselves in the moment we no longer can act like our presence is an illusion but we must act and know that we are something that our beingness brings something to this world and we have the opportunity to choose whether we bring virtue or more vice into it I want to go a little bit over uh, Benjamin Franklin's virtues, just glossing over them, not glossing, but checking them out. So these are... Uh, the virtues that Benjamin Franklin would focus on. And essentially what he would do is he essentially would take one week and he would rotate and he'd work on really focusing on one virtue every week specifically. And he would do the system where he would check a box or a little dot if he didn't live up to that virtue how he wanted to. So as you can see, maybe we can just zoom in right here. And this one has a higher quality, which I would prefer. It says, temperance, eat not to dullness, drink not to elevation, silence, speak not but what may benefit others or yourself, avoid trifling conversation, order, let all your things have their places, 
let each part of your business have its time. Resolution. Resolve to perform what you ought. Perform without fail what you resolve. Frugality. Make no expense to do good un, uh, to others or yourself. That is waste. Make no expense to do good to others or yourself. That is waste nothing. Industry. Lose no time. Be always employed in something useful. Cut off all unnecessary actions. Be fruitful. Sincerity. Use no hurtful deceit. Think innocently and justly. If you speak, act accordingly. <clears throat> Be a man of your word. Justice. R wrong none by doing injuries or omitting the benefit that are your duty. Avoid extremes. Forbear resenting injuries as much so as uh, so much as you think they deserve. Cleanliness. Tolerate no uncleanliness in body, clothes, or habitation. Habitation, very important. Chastity. Rarely use venery, but for health or offspring. Never to dullness, weakness, or the off or the injury of your own or another's peace or reputation. Tranquility. Be not disturbed at trifles or at Incidents, common or avoidable. Humility. Imitate Jesus and Socrates. So I think that's really cool to meditate on that if you have at the time. Maybe. So we've gone through virtue, we've gone through vice. We, we've realized that virtue ethics are at the our habits are at the foundation of it that our disposition and the way that we inherently are deeply really act, act like it. I'm going to get into the Masonic virtue aspect of it with the morals and dogma right there. We went through the cardinal virtues. We can go a little bit more into Taoism, Confucianism. The golden rule, and as you sow, shall you reap, you know, that's the, that's the Christian way, you know. Maybe. <laughs> As you sow, shall you reap. And as it says in Galatians, you know, faint not for you shall sow if, you know, for you shall reap if you keep going, you know, like, uh, says, let us not be weary of well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And as, uh, do unto others, KJV, what it, God, what did he say to us in the book? Whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. Therefore, all things, this for this is the law and the prophets. The golden rule is at the foundation of this. How would you want to be treated? And when you really meditate on that, is how you get to that Christic place, that unified place where I think you really start to realize that we want to be treated in the same way. We want to be loved. We want to be appreciated. We want to be taken care of and supported. So, as you sow, shall so, as you sow, so shall you reap. Karma. I don't know. I mean, like I said, guys, I I know a decent amount about the Eastern stuff. I'm gonna just be real. Definitely a lot more versed when it comes to uh, Western. Um, so when it comes to Dharma, you know, in, in different in different cultures, like I'm gonna get, I'm gonna let you guys go and do that. Go look up Dharma, you know, what I mean, go look up uh, the Etymony of the Good Spirit in the Greek. Go look up RT, which is uh, the virtue, the virtuous uh, energy lady, and like the Roman, I believe, uh, uh, Roman. Uh, she's not showing up right now. You can find her. That's her name. I know it is some. But stoicism, right? What what is stoicism? Stoicism is based upon these virtues. It's a it's a school of virtue ethics, which helps a man to be a stoic individual. Hellenistic philosophy. There's a lot of beautiful stuff within there, especially um, in astrology as well. says the stoics believed that the practice of virtue is enough to achieve edamonia the good spirit a well-lived flourishing life 
The Stoics identified the path to achieving it with a life spent practicing certain virtues in everyday life, such as courage or temperance and living in accordance with nature. Alongside Aristotle ethics, the Stoic tradition forms one of the major founding approaches to virtue ethics. So I think that it's, you know, very interesting. I would have to honestly go more into research to give you like, what are these specific um, things that they, you know, really focused on, but ethics, the Stoics arrange the passions under four heading distress. So it's like, you know, they have their own system. That's what I'm saying. There's different system to help you identify and understand virtue, how you should act, what you should uh, watch out for. This is also uh, demonstrated within the seven virtues, which you would also associate with the seven planetary energies. You know, if you're talking about Sun, Mars, Jupiter, you know, uh, Aries, or not your <laughs> Venus, Saturn, uh, Jupiter, yeah. So within the Christian tradition, we have uh, the seven virtues, which are chastity, temperance, charity, diligence, patience, kindness, humility, uh, but we also have their anteriors, which are lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, pride. These seven deadly sins are associated with seven demons. These seven virtues are associated with seven angels, the Elohim, right? Classical theory, it'll change. We got like Sandai, this, I don't, we got to find the virtues of the seven angels, right? Uh, you can connect, and that essentially what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do with this. I'll show you guys real fast what I'm kind of working on. It's putting this together, right? Like the different virtues that different um, angels possess, like Ariel, we got uh, Chamael, Anael, Zadakiel, Gabriel, Raziel, Metatron, Jophiel, Jeremiah, the Christos, Ragael, Azrael, Uriel, and Sandalphon. And so I'm just trying to, and I'm still working on figuring out how it all works and the, and the specific correspondences which are correct. So don't take this as the word. Then we also got the seven days of the week, you know, seven virtues, seven days. We got Gabriel, Raphael, Anael, Michael, Kamael, Sachael, Kasael, and the different planets associated with those days and with those angels. So different virtues are associated with different planetary energies. So through sympathetic magic, through the law of correspondence, the doctrine of signatures, through the law of resonance, we can start to then understand how we may increase virtue within ourselves by focusing on different planetary energy, by praying to the hierarchs, by assisting in them and helping them and building a relationship with them. And through this process, through the frequencies at which they oscillate the planetary energies and the different virtues, and by entraining our brain to, with neural oscillation to allow ourselves to then um, arise on these different levels of virtue. As we said, virtue is obviously exemplified within the knight system and chivalry and what that is based off of being a gentleman. Uh, Taoism, I mean, guys, like I said, I love Taoism. There's a lot of stuff within that. That's just that I don't, I don't really want to get too into today. Um, I'm gonna go over the four principles and the eight, uh, and the eight virtues which you think are interesting. Cause look, what does it add up to? Eight plus four, twelve. Twelve zodiac. What what what, what we just look at? That? Like the what what what, what blah, 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 blah. one two three four five six seven eight twelve, and then there's the Ophicius, which is his own thing. But in there, it's. Propriety, righteousness, integrity, shame, virtues are filial piety, benevolence, love, honesty, justice, harmony, and peace, right? Taoism uh, <clears throat> is a blessing, beautiful philosophy, uh, blessings to my Tao relatives, my Tao family. I love you guys, and I just want to say thank you for being here and supporting me. Uh, and last but not least, we're going to talk and go a little bit into morals and dogma. And, uh, yeah, so I'm wondering how much, oh, and I did have RT, like I was saying, look, 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 the goddess of excellence and virtue, uh, in Greek thought. So it's the moral virtue, which is the sister of Harmonia, which is the, uh, goddess of harmony. So let's see what we went through before I get to that more. We went through that, we went through that, forgot I had this low key guys. We went through that, went through that. I'll show you guys too. 
de is another word for morality or virtue. I'm not. I'm just going through it real fast for you guys. I'm not gonna really go too deep. Oops. We got chivalry right here. There's another code of conduct, another uh, virtuous order that people would follow. System to be a noble, to be um, to fall, to be a gentleman. And then we're going to go into John 2 real fast because I believe it's awesome. There's some beautiful, beautiful things in here right here. We're not going to go. Okay, I mean, I might just read it all fast. Let's see. It says, my children, these things I write to you that you do not sin. Let's go. Da -da -da. Let's see the right here. It's more. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoso keeps his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked we have to live up to christ we have to exemplify the virtue that our lord and savior christ uh exemplified he showed us that we could do it if we believe and have faith and so let me get right here into the end of this stuff uh, we go into the masonic Obviously, we don't got to get too much in that. We know that, you know, the forces and the virtues that are uh, really what inspire masonry. And I'm going to go actually to one thing. But uh, it says, and masonry, like history and philosophy as eternal duties. Da -da -da. It is also most true that truth is, divine is a divine attribute and the foundation of every virtue to be true and to seek and to, and to seek to find and learn the truth are the great objects of every good mason right you see that right there truth is at the foundation of every virtue as the ancients did masonry styles temperance fortitude prudence and justice the four cardinal virtues they are as necessary to nations as to individuals. The people that would be free and independent must possess sagacity, forethought, foresight, and careful circumspection of all which are included in the meaning of the word prudence. It must be temperate in asserting its rights, temperate in its counsels, economic or in its expenses. And it goes on about the virtues, right? So in the beginning of this, it talks about the economic, you, you know, uh, force unregulated is just like wasted energy into the void. And that through wisdom and intelligence, we are able to rightfully use power to create it in, in a harmonious way. Human energy is, we, we are electrical magnetic, we're electromagnetic beings, we're always emitting electricity. And just how the, and just how we have men who, uh, just how we have men who utilize electricity and, and channel it to power up our lights and our home and our computers, so too do men and businessmen and managers utilize and conduct the force, the electrical magnetic force of human workforce to then essentially cause certain things to happen into this world. So if we don't learn how to properly use our own energy and our own virtue and power, somebody else will teach us or show us or use us and like, make us do, how do I articulate it? If we don't use our own power, somebody else is going to use it. And the only way to use our own power is for us to cultivate our own inner virtue. Um, so the the human force must be economized and uh, you it's either you, you choose to economize yourself or somebody else economizes you. And I would rather work for myself than for uh, somebody else, All right? Boaz, strength. Then this is where I'm going to end on, is this, this Masonic Decalogue, which is a law to its initiates, and these are the Ten Commandments. God is the eternal, omnipotent, immutable wisdom, and supreme intelligence, and exaltless love. Thou shalt adore, revere, and love him. Thou shalt honor him by practicing the virtues. Thy religion shall be 
to do good because it is a pleasure to thee and not merely because it is a duty. That thou mayest become the friend of the wise man, thou shalt obey his precepts. Thy soul is immortal, thou shalt do nothing to degrade it. Thou shalt unceasingly war against vice. Thou shalt do unto others that which thou wouldest not wish them to do unto thee. Shall not do. Right? That thou shalt be submissive to thy fortunes and keep burning the light of wisdom. Thou shalt honor thy parents. Filial piety. Thou shalt pay respect and homage to the aged. Thou shalt instruct the young. Thou shalt protect and defend infancy and innocence. Thou shalt cherish thy wife and thy children. Thou shalt love thy country and obey its laws. Thy, shall, uh, thy friend shall be to thee a second self. Misfortune shall not estrange thee from him. Thou shalt not do for his memory whatever thou shalt do for his memory whatever thou wouldest do for him if he were living. Thou shalt avoid and flee from insincere friendships. Thou shalt in everything refrain from excess. Thou shalt fear to be the cause of a stain on thy memory. Thou shalt allow no passions to become thy master. Thou shalt make the passions of others profitable lessons to thyself. Thou shalt be, thou shalt be indulgent to error. Thou shalt hear much. Thou shalt speak little. Thou shalt act well. Thou shalt forget injuries. Thou shalt render good for evil. Thou shalt not misuse either thy strength or thy superiority. Thou shalt not, or uh, thou shalt study to know men, that thereby thou mayest learn to know thyself. Thou shalt every seek after virtue. Thou shalt be just. Thou shalt avoid idleness. But the great commandment of masonry is this: a new commandment give I unto you that ye love one another. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother remaineth still in the darkness. Blessings, blessings, blessings to Allah. Thank you so much for listening to me tonight. It's been hard for me to do this because who am I to talk on these things? I'm, I'm far from perfect. I'm just a guy who's just, who really believes in this stuff. And for anyone who wants to talk about this stuff too and has a voice and is trying to develop the courage and doesn't feel like they have the, the, the authority to speak on these things. I'm going to go into this one in another video, but we have St. Bernard talking about uh, humility and pride. And uh, I'm not going to go into it, but I'm just going to read this preface and leave you with that and, and uh, let you guys have a great uh, time. So it says, Prefix, you have asked me, Brother Godfrey, to expand and put in writing the substance of the, the addresses on the degree of humility, which I had delivered to the brethren. I admit that, anxious as I was to give this request of yours, the serious answer that it deserved, I was doubtful whether I could comply with it. For with the evangelist's warning in mind, I did not venture to begin the work until I had sat down and calculated whether my resources were sufficient for its completion. Then, when love had cast out the fear that I had en en entertained of ridicule for failure to complete my work, I was replaced by misgiving of a different kind, for I was apprehensive of a greater danger from the credit that might attend success than of the disgrace that might attach to failure. So I found myself, as it were, at the parting of the ways indicated respectively by affection and by fear, respectively, and I was long in doubt as to which was the safer choice. For I was afraid that if I said anything worth saying about humility, I myself might be found wanting in that virtue. Whereas if on the grounds of modesty, I refused to speak, I might fail in usefulness, industry. And I saw that though neither of these courses is free from peril, I should have obliged, I should be obliged to take one or the other. So I have thought it better to give you the benefit of everything that I can say than to seek personal safety in the harbor of silence. And I earnestly trust that I am, if I am fortunate enough to say anything which commands itself, un, uh, itself to you, that I have in your prayers a safeguard against pride. Whereas if, as if 
more likely I produce nothing worthy of your attention, there will be no possible cause for conceit. These are my intentions, and I feel this so much through him. I have nothing but the best to give to you guys. I have nothing but love to give to you all. I want to uplift you. I want to help you guys. I want to share with you what I really believe is something worth striving and obtaining after. And hey, we're on this journey together. Please join me and continue to walk, uh, follow me on this dress venture of mine. Appreciate you all. Love you all. This is Dress Venture signing out. Peace.